Mr. President, I have good news. With days left before Christmas, Democrats and Republicans have reached an omnibus agreement completed at 1.15 a.m. early this morning. In the very early hours of the morning, Chairman Leahy and Ranking Member Shelby released a long-sought bipartisan, bicameral cameral, omnibus appropriations bill for fiscal year 2023. The omnibus is the last thing we have to do to close out a very successful 117th Congress. And we've taken another step, a major step, towards reaching the goal line. After a lot of hard work, this package represents an aggressive investment in American families, American workers, and America's national defense. It'll give our troops a raise, make health care more affordable for millions, and it fulfills the promise Democrats made to defend democracy at home and abroad through the ECA. It was no easy feat to piece this bill together. And if our amazing appropriator staff needs a quick power nap on, at their desks this morning, no one's going to blame them. I want to thank Chairman Leahy and Ranking Member Shelby for working on this omnibus for months without cease. I can't think of a more fitting send-off for our two esteemed appropriators than this. If this omnibus goes down as Senator Leahy and Shelby's final legislative contribution as senators, then I say, bravo, thank you, well done. I also want to thank my colleagues in the House, above all, Speaker Pelosi and Chair DeLauro for their relentless work. The clock is now ticking until Government Front runs out this Friday. Between now and the end of the week, the watchwords for the Senate will be speed and cooperation. For the information of senators, we're going to get, this, we're going to get going on this process today. Members should be ready to vote to lay the omnibus before the Senate as soon as this afternoon. We must finish passing this omnibus before the deadline on Friday when government funding runs out. But we hope to do it much sooner than that because we're mindful that a nor'easter is barreling down the East Coast on Thursday and Friday. Let me say this again. The sooner we pass the omnibus, the better. We have until Friday before funding runs out, but we ought to get it done well before then. I hope no senator will stand in the way of us finishing our work. We cannot afford a shutdown. More importantly, the American people need us to act quickly. As I said, the American people need us to act quickly to avert the looming danger of a government shutdown. Nobody wants a shutdown. Nobody benefits from a shutdown. And so I hope nobody here will stand in the way from funding the government ASAP. Now let's turn to the omnibus itself. This funding bill is overflowing with very good news for our troops, for the Ukrainian brave fighters, for American jobs, for our families, and for American democracy. After a lot of hard work, Democrats will fulfill our promise to pass reforms to the Electoral Count Act into law. Two years after January 6th, the attack on our capital remains an indelible stain on our democracy, and updating the Electoral Count Act is one of the ways we can prevent another January 6th in the future. It is so important to do, and I want to thank Senators Manchin and Collins and the group they put together to put the ECA together, and Senators Klobuchar and Blunt on the Rules Committee for their help in making this happen. I said months ago we would do everything possible to pass ECA reform, and now we're following through. Many thanks, of course, go to all my colleagues who made this possible. The omnibus is also going to fill our promise to stand with our friends in Ukraine, with billions more in emergency economic and military aid. The bitterness of winter has descended on Eastern Europe. And if our friends in Ukraine hope to triumph over Russia, America must stand firmly on the side of our democratic friends abroad. They are not asking for nor do they want American troops, but they do need the weaponry to defend themselves against a brutal Putin. On the home front, the omnibus will make health care more affordable and more expansive for millions upon millions of Americans.
For the first time ever, every child in America who qualifies for Medicaid or CHIP will now be guaranteed at least one year of continuous health coverage. This is a major change that will make a big difference in improving health care for millions of kids. We will permanently extend a policy from the American Rescue Plan that lets states give a full year of postpartum coverage for mothers on Medicaid and CHIP. This is something huge, something I have so strongly believed in and fought for. It's a major step to address America's crisis in maternal health and mortality. Many elements of the momnibus are in this bill, good elements of the momnibus, particularly from, for women of color who have long been discriminated against when it comes to birth and postpartum coverage. The omnibus also represents a new offensive in the battle against America's mental health crisis. We all know that crisis is at record levels. We all know we have to do something about it. This omnibus does. Overdoses and substance abuse are at record levels. I fought hard to make sure this package will allow seniors to get Medicare coverage for counseling, funding to train new psychiatrists, create new mental health mobile crisis units, and instruct Medicare to cover intensive outpatient mental health, mental health care. We're also going to attack the opioid crisis head on by expanding options for medication-assisted treatment, while also making never-before-seen investments in suicide prevention, maternal mental health, pediatric mental health, and so much more. We're also, we're, we will also keep making health care more accessible than it was in years past. We'll ensure Medicare beneficiaries can keep using telehealth through 2024. That's huge, particularly in rural areas. We'll invest new resources to hire and train more doctors, nurses, and other health care workers who have been in high demand over the past couple of years. We're also increasing support for rural and low-income hospitals that very often have to get by with precious little help. So on the health care front, the omnibus is an aggressive, generous, and far-reaching package. And I salute all those, including Chairman Murray and Chairman Leahy, for their work on this. On the manufacturing and science front, the omnibus secures the first major down payment in building the tech hubs across the country that we have authorized through the Chips and Science Act. This means real dollars to create the Silicon Valleys, the Silicon Forests, the Silicon Heartlands and Prairies of tomorrow. And again, I want to thank uh, Chair Cantwell for her steadfast leadership on this issue, as well as my colleague uh, on the other side of the aisle, Todd Young. Under the omnibus, we'll also secure the largest increase for the National Science Foundation of all time, including a surge in funds for the new technology directorate and for STEM work workforce training that will spur chip growth across the country and give training to millions who have been left out of the increase in jobs in tech. Also included are billions to support universities, national labs, manufacturers, entrepreneurs, and workers with the support necessary for the U.S. to beat back China and remain technologically competitive on the world stage. That's not all. There's much more to celebrate in this package. We will keep our promise to our veterans by fully funding provisions of the PACT Act so veterans suffering from burn pit exposure can get the care they deserve. We'll help veterans with their mental health needs, reform VA long-term care services, and support veterans who struggle with homelessness. We say to our veterans, you've been there when we've needed you. This omnibus is there when you need us. For students, we've secured the largest increase in Pell Grants in over a decade, an increase of $500. The maximum Pell Grant will now be $7,395, providing ladders up for millions of kids who come from poor and working families. That's a great thing. For the first time in history, we'll also bring Indian health services into parity with all other health care providers. This historic provision helps fulfill the federal government's trust responsibility to our tribes. We'll provide more resources, health care coverage, and the dignity they deserve. We've secured billions for more child care access, billions for homeless assistance grants, billions for rural housing services, over a billion for home investment partnership programs, and over a billion for housing for the elderly and housing for persons with disabilities. So from start to finish, 
from top to bottom, this omnibus is bold, generous, far-reaching, and ambitious. It's not everything we would have wanted, of course. Lots of, when you're dealing in a bipartisan, bicameral way, you have to sit down and get it done, and that means each side has to concede some things. But it is something that we can be very proud of, all of us. Now, we must get this done before Friday, well, well before that, if possible. I want to thank every single colleague and staff member who worked relentlessly to put this piece together. Not only Senators Leahy and Shelby, but their, chair, their subcommittee chairs and ranking members. It was a Herculean feat for our dedicated appropriators. The process may have been difficult, but I'm confident we're now in a position to pass this bill quickly. And I'm even more confident that once we finish our work on this package, America will be a healthier, more prosperous, and more, secu more secure country thanks to the work we have done here and now. Thanks to my colleagues. Let's finish the bill very soon. I yield the floor. Note the absence of a quorum.